This is the Provoke Prawn, and this is the Corsair Xenian Flex. This is a 45-inch OLED display from Corsair, which has a ultra-wide 3440 by 1440p resolution, 240 hertz refresh rate, and a number of other highlights. Now, I've been testing this monitor out, and I'm going to show you some of the features and things about it that are awesome. But one of them, obviously, you're going to see is it's really striking. Obviously, it'll be difficult to do this justice over camera and then onto whatever you're watching it on. But OLED just results in absolutely fantastic color space, really good visuals and awesome highlights. As I said, 240 hertz refresh rate as well, so it gives you really smooth gaming. But there are other things to it. It's 100% sRGB color gamut, for example up to 1,000 nits peak brightness. It has a 0.03 millisecond greater gray response time on it as well. So it's super fast, smooth, and wonderful. This is a 45 inch monitor with a really interesting design to it that allows you to bend it. I'll show you that in a second because it's pretty nuts. But that is what all this support on the back is all about. You'll see that it comes on a really large chunky stand. And this stand is actually one of the small and wonderful highlights of the design for me personally as a tech reviewer to see all of these inputs at the rear, not underneath the panel where you have to awkwardly reach around and try and plug things in. Instead, you've got HDMI and DisplayPort and everything else right at the back, including USB-C connections as well. So there's a USB-C connection that plugs into your PC, which then gives you pass-through on the front so you can see you can then plug in two USB-As and a headphone jack as well because this monitor doesn't have speakers built into it but it does have pass-through for audio, so you can listen to the sound. Now, one of the quirks of the monitor is that it comes flat, but if you pull out the handles on the side, you can bend it, and it will go from flat to 800R curve and anything in between, so you can bend it whichever way you want. So obviously, a little bit in or all the way in, you, it's, the choice is yours. It's a pretty terrifying thing to do, and it's a bit weird and unusual, but I actually found it quite quirky and also beneficial in some ways. If you're doing sort of productivity work, flat is pretty nice. But once you get into a game and you're sitting quite close, you bend that screen in, you then get a more immersive view of the world. Now, this is a 1440p monitor, but it's ultra wide with 20 by 9 resolution, which means that you have that less vertical height than traditional monitors, but not as much as you'd normally see at an ultra-wide monitor or a super ultra-wide in my mind. It is wide, but it, as you can see from these shots, it looks pretty magnificent. I played loads of different games on it, and I tried to get multiple angles to show you the color accuracy, the brilliance of the visuals, just how smooth and wonderful it is. It has AMD FreeSync Premium and NVIDIA G-Sync compatibility, and all those things as well that you'd expect. It's got anti-glare and flicker-free design as well as low blue light emission settings as well. So there's plenty going on there and obviously a variety of different visual settings in there too. Now all this does come at a price because it is over £2,000 sterling and the same in dollars. So it is ridiculously expensive. But you are getting an absolutely stunning monitor. I really found, as you can see... That it's just brilliant. Now it's got HDR as well. And what I found is look at just the difference between the dark areas and the bright areas. As you just step out of a dark building into a bright one, you get blinded by the light. It's just really bright as the peak brightness hits you. And also just has a really good range in there as well. You can see HDR settings in here. One thing of note is interesting in the picture settings, you can't turn HDR on unless you first of all go into your window settings and turn HDR on through there. But if you turn HDR off, you then access a variety of different ones in here. You can see the standard game creative text, which is like a low blue light emission one that's helpful if you're going to be working on spreadsheets or something all day long. And then you've got a bunch of other settings. So there's also a function mode for P by P, which is picture by picture and picture in picture modes. And there's interesting highlights there if you're plugging in multiple devices. It's not something I did, but it is something interesting to, to experiment with if you want to. And one of the other things is the pixel refresh. So as an OLED monitor, you need to make sure that if you're using it for a long time, you use this tool in the settings. This is an important point of note if you do buy it. You have to go into there and then start the pixel refresh. It takes five minutes and it refreshes the screen. What this does is it stops burning or reduces the chances of burning over time. It's not something I had an issue with, but if you're using it a long-term use and also for multiple hours in a day and there are static things on the screen, you will want to go through there and use that setting. 
Now, another thing you'll notice is that it obviously goes up to 240 hertz refresh rate, but you do need to make sure you set that in Windows. So you need to go into your display settings and basically click on 240 hertz. I've done a video previously on this, but it's worth making sure that you have that set in there. And then it'll also be set at the monitor level, because if you don't do that, it will default to 60 hertz. Also, if you go going through picture-in-picture -picture modes, it resets to 60 hertz as well. So you can't actually use 240 hertz in the multiple modes. But what you'll see from the 45 inch ultra wide is that you can snap four windows in each corner of the screen and still have plenty of space. So I obviously worked like this. I've got work going on. I've got Netflix going on. There's YouTube there. You can multitask until your heart's content and it gives you plenty of room to do these things. Downside, of course, is if you have 16 by nine footage, for example, one of my YouTube videos is playing back here. It's recorded at 16 by nine. You end up with black bars on the sides. Now, this is one of the issues with ultra wide monitors. You may experience it in games as well, especially usually in cutscenes. So if you've not used ultra wide before, you'll find when it transitions into a cutscene, you'll end up with these black bars down the side and it ruins the immersion, which is a shame and unfortunate, but it's not super often. Now there was one small complaint I did have about this, which is really hard to put across on video, but I did notice that the text wasn't as crisp and clear as I'd seen on previous OLEDs that I tried. And so using it for sort of reading text, you might find on a white background, black text doesn't look super clear and the same the other way around as well. But for gaming, didn't notice any problems at all. Absolutely fantastic in loads of different games really color rich, really good range of colors and brightness. Obviously you can see various different lighting settings here. So I've recorded at night and during the day under heavy video lighting as well, just to give you an idea of just how powerful it is. This is in game mode for the most part to make the most of those obviously adaptive sync settings and also just the good colors and brightness to it. But you can see it's really, really good looking. Is it worth 2000? It's going to be up to you really. But I will say that if you've not used OLED before, it really is worth that money because it's so much better than the other screen technologies, older screen technologies out there. It's really, really good, really good quality, and it just ticks so many boxes. Now, the bendable aspect of the monitor might not be for everybody. It could be a little quirky gimmick. You probably won't find yourself bending and unbending it and flattening it out loads of times in a day. You probably will you know, have a couple of favorite positions that you'd like to put it in, or maybe you'll just bend it once and then forget about it. <laughs> or maybe you'll just have it flat all the time. It's really a personal preference where you're going to position it and other things. There are some points of note, though. The stand isn't really adjustable. You can tilt the monitor back and forth from the bottom and top. You'll see there's a handle underneath it. You can just sort of tilt it up and down back towards the wall, for example. But you can't lift it up. You can't lift the monitor up and reposition it higher. So you need to make sure that your desk height is right for your eye level and things like that. It does take up a lot of room as well. So this is a 45 inch monitor. I've got it on a two meter long desk and it dominated most of that desk. You can see it's basically taken up a lot of the room. Yes, I've got the PC off to the side. That's the Corsair 5000D airflow, by the way. You see, you can see a size comparison. This monitor is basically twice and maybe a bit more in terms of the size of that case. So it gives you an idea of just how huge the space is and just how much room you'll need. You're obviously also seeing the stand is pretty fat and hefty and it has to be and you want it to be. There's no wobble or any problems with that that I've seen. It's a nice solidly built bit of kit. The screen itself is also really thin. You can see from various angles, really thin and yet it doesn't feel weak. There is some creaking when you do bend it, which is pretty terrifying when you consider the amount of money, but otherwise it seems like it's really good build quality. I haven't got any issues with it at all. Also, as you can see from multiple angles, including really obscure ones like this one here, the visuals look great from every angle too. It's got good viewing angles on it. I can't fault it. The only faults are text really is just not great. I tried a few different sayings. I couldn't get it looking. It just looked a little bit blurry around the edges. It wasn't as clear as I'd like, but you might not notice it. And the price, the price might put a lot of people off. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Be sure to check out the links in the description to find out more. If you want to watch the video on the Airflow 5000D, for example, and the RGB lighting that you've seen in here, and also that Razor chair, all linked down below. Thanks for watching. 
You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend, you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.